and we are back with the Endless Torch version 1.1. 1 .1. A minor revision change, but everything I said I was going to do in the last video, I did. Which really wasn't much more than the top LED enlarging the footprint, so this way I can hand solder a little bit better, and shrinking the size of it. Also redid the layout so it works out a little bit better. But we basically went from a 1.4 inch disc to a 1.1 inch disc. And that actually makes the circuit board a little bit cheaper, a little more compact, and it works beautifully. So, thing is first, I got a new Oshpark sticker, so I'll have to put that on my uh, pick and place, my manual pick and place machine. So, get that out of the way for the time being. And got the new st uh, stencil for it. But before we do and build these, we have to uh, rob Peter to pay Paul. So, to save some money, I'm going to pull off... Uh, the ZSPM 4523 chip, the inductors, because they're like $2 each, a uh, couple of the switches, and the micro USB. All the little tiny passives, like the resistors and capacitors, those can stay. I'm going to need the uh, supervisor chip, because uh, that's like another 50, 60 cents each. So building three, it makes it a lot cheaper. The only thing I really had to buy was... Uh, a few of the green LEDs, because the LEDs, once you solder them on, they're a pain in the butt to take off, and they usually just fall apart. So, ha, ah, there goes my ball. So, yeah, I don't take anything off the top, it's just a few, so let's uh, unsolder. So, now we got two of the discs hooked up, let's get some uh, hot air here. I can get it around. And let's grab some stuff. Let's heat up the chip. We're going to burn out the LED on the back, but like I said, I don't care. We're not going to reuse it. Got a current sense resistor. Get back here. Okay. Get rid of that one. Put this one up here. <clears throat> so before we go to assembly of the used parts we need to clean them up mainly the micro usb ports and the actual zspm 4523 we got to take the extra solder off it so this way we don't get too many solder bridges when we go to reassemble it so let's clean it up real quick and my style of cleaning up is i just put some flux on some expanded solder wick and put it right on there and hope the, hopefully the heat sucks the way through That one's good. Ooh, hot. Much better. Yeah, we basically want to get most of the solder off that center cooling pad. Otherwise, when we put the new solder paste on, it's going to build up too much and it has the possibility of shooting out during reflow and hitting each one of these pins and shorting out the whole chip. So that's what we really got to clean off. Yep, nicely cleaned up. Now we just got to hit them with a little bit of electronics cleaner to clean off the flux. 
Hopefully they don't go flying everywhere. Get you out of the fuck's mess. Okay, back to where we're at. Do I have more micro USB? Oh yeah, I do. Okay, screw that. I'm not reusing those. Because some of the contacts on the back of them look kind of... Yeah. So, yeah, we'll get three brand new ones. One, two, three. Cool. Okay, now we can start assembly. Okay, so we got them reflowed. And actually, I for once did not have any solder bridges, so it worked out real good. So now we gotta flip on over and mount the LEDs. So this time, I did make the pads a little wider. So what I'm gonna do is hit them with some solder first, get them pre-soldered, put the LEDs on, and I should be able to move the LED over just enough so this way I can touch the uh, iron onto it and reflow it again and get the LED to stick on. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. It's pre tin. Flux is the savior of all men. <sighs> Who let you solder? Okay, so wide sections over there, so turn this around. It over. LED goes on like that. Over. You can see on the bottom. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if I screw this up. Clean them up. Quick evaporation. Okay, so they should fit on perfectly just like this. So, let's see here, positive hits right here. There we go. Ooh, that fits on there nicely. I like that. Let's get my other two. And we'll charge them up and test them out and see what happens. Snap, snap, snap. Snap in there. The inductor's really close, but it still works out nicely. There we go. Okay, let's uh, plug one in and see what happens. Okay, it goes in this way. focus there we go that's much better so now it should be charging and yeah we're on keep it on low for the time being as soon as this cap charges up enough it should kick on once it hits like 0.9 volts 
Oh yeah, she's charging up. Give it a little bit. Oh, there we go. It's wow. I think these chips are supposed to start at like 0.7 volts. This one started at just under 0.6. That was great. Then again, I have it on low setting, but even on high, it should still be perfectly fine. Yep. There we go. Okay, first one tests out fine. We'll do the final charge and make sure the green LED works afterwards. Let's uh, move on to the second one here. See when this one kicks on. Yep, we're charging. Yeah, I believe these uh, boost chips aren't supposed to really start. Oh my god, yeah. 560 millivolts and it turns on on a low load. There's high. Okay, cool. That's two. Let's try the third one. I think most of these caps had a shipping charge. Of, actually, wait, no. On one of these caps is new. Two of them is used. But yeah, they usually die out around like 350 millivolts. Let's see if this one also turns on at 560 millivolts. I had to have a dud somewhere, didn't I? Oh, there we go. Okay, 590 millivolts for this one. So let's let them charge up the rest of the way and make sure the green LED works underneath. And if that's the case, I'm soldering these posts on and they're staying the way they are. Definitely getting warm, but it doesn't look like we're having too much of a thermal problem even with the smaller circuit board. Ooh, but that one's really hot. I think this one needs to be, I think this one needs to be reprogrammed. <laughs> Yeah, this one needs to be reprogrammed. 2.66. There we go. It just turned on. You can barely see it, like right here. There's a green LED. Yep. So it's saying that this one is fully charged or close enough. So this one is perfectly good and ready to be soldered on. This one, on the other hand, let's see where we're sitting here. This one. 2.35. This one's almost there. So here is all three, all assembled, all soldered to the actual super caps, and they're all working. I did reprogram the third one. And, yep, there's our green LEDs on all three saying they're charged. And on, 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 high, high, high. And I had absolutely no problems putting this together. The only thing I have to do is put my balls back on which I'm not going to do in this video you've already seen how to do that so I'm going to basically call this project done except for the fact that I'm probably blinding everyone right now so let's turn it back to low and look down in the description below this video I will have information on how you can get these boards from Osh Park I will share the boards I will try to put the uh, bomb the bill of materials also with the board itself on Osh Park and basic instructions on how to assemble it if you want to do this yourself. I am not selling these. These are just for anyone who wants to play with them. So it's a much more inexpensive way to start playing with super caps than the big six super cap board I made before that you can do anything with. So if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. Thumbs up always help. I'll see you next video.